Okay, so with the data mine out, we can actually see their stats now, and we also see Julius, which they indicated was a Grand Hero Battle Quest. So here is Julius. Here is Le Lenny. <laughs> Dude, people said to call her Lin. Um, and then whenever I think about it, I, I, try, I say Lenny or something. It's so weird. Uh, there's Ishtar, and then there's Ares. Well, goddamn, everyone's good. So let's start with Julius. I mean, just from peeking at this, you guys know everyone's good. Yeah, everyone's good. <laughs> Julius is our free hero. 38 HP, 35 attack, 27 speed, 16 defense, 35 res. Is this... Is this just another Arvis? This looks like another Arvis to me. Um, we, I, of course, I don't know his weapon skills, but this looks like an another Arvis, which looks like another Oliver, which looks like another... Um, what was his name again? The most recent one, the giant laser beam, Sias. Basically, it's like it's like they keep redoing the same hero, <laughs> just because it's free. They just keep redoing the same hero. Like he's gonna fulfill the same roles, but as a red version, uh, he's gonna be do the same things as Arvis. But you know, there's not much I can say without seeing his his skills first. But his stat spread just reminds me a lot of Arvis. His weapon is broken. Okay, his weapon grants plus three res. Skills of effective against dragons are effective against unit. So he's going to count as a dragon then. If foes has no skills with eff effective against dragons, inflict attack minus six on foe during combat. That doesn't seem broken though. Basically he just takes away six attack from them. But with his speed being so low and his defense being so low, well I guess versus mages will help out a lot, but versus um, versus anything melee that doesn't make a big difference I see. I don't think it's broken. That's really interesting though, the way they're wording it. What do Julius, Sias, and Arvis, and Oliver have in common? They're all the same and boring, says Gino. Okay, well, I wouldn't go that far. Either way, I can't say much about Julius without seeing the rest of the skill kit, but I don't think his weapon's broken. His weapon seems really interesting and different, though. Um, just hard for me to be excited against for uh, basically a reskin of the same stats on another character, on another hero, and then done over and over again. I mean, sure, the slow, high-res, you know, mage who's supposed to be counterattacking. Like, we've talked about this for a long time now. Anyways, not the greatest feelings on Julius, but we'll move on. So our newest dancer, um, I actually got corrected on this. She's supposed to be around 16 to 18, most likely. Somebody even said up to 20. She's quite young, and the reason why I mentioned age is because she looks so developed. Like, she has the biggest assets. That's what we're going to call it. She looks really good, and her stat spread reminds me of um, all of, sorry, Olivia. <laughs> I said all of her. 35 speed means she's faster than Olivia by 3, 28 attack comparable to Olivia, 35 HP comparable to Olivia, 23 defense comparable to Olivia, 28 res comparable to Olivia. Everything here is comparable to Olivia. There's not like much big differences here. I'm gonna double check my Olivia. So yeah, Olivia has 28 res, 29 defense instead of 23. Uh, Olivia has 3 less, uh, 3 less speed though, and the base attack is basically the same uh she's she has two fewer and you know one fewer hp yeah it's very similar just not much to say here she is going to be better because of her sword adding plus seven defense when attacked so what i what i have to say here is this is basically an improved olivia who is even dressed even skimpier and has bigger assets and is overall better because she has a refinable sword with plus seven uh defense when attack which is huge right so she's really good and she has a B ability that really helps with buffing up. I believe it's attack and speed by three when she dances a hero. So as a refresher, she's, she's going to be better than Olivia. Basically, I would build her the same as Olivia though. I would just do Fury Wings of Mercy on her. And obviously you would want to get plus speed minus HP or minus res or something. Uh, you really wouldn't want her to fight though, but you don't want to touch her defense because with her sword, she has effectively 30 defense, which is okay. Either way, she's a good dancer, a great, good replacement for Olivia. The only thing interesting to see is if she's going to be dropped to 4 stars. She's the only possible candidate to drop to 4 stars in this entire banner. Both Ishtar and Ishtar and Ares are just too good to drop to 4 stars. So it's all up to her. If, if she drops, she's her direct replacement to um, Olivia. And if she doesn't drop, she's still a replacement to Olivia. But yeah, she's really good. If she doesn't drop to 4 stars, Olivia is still better. Yeah, if she doesn't drop to 4 stars, Olivia will be better because of the merge ability. You can get Olivia quite easily, and when we're talking about arena and using heroes in arena, of course you guys know more merges equals more points, and you need points to stay in higher levels of arena. 
So, with that said, because they're so comparable in like the key stats of attack and speed, Olivia's slower by 3, and Lini? I think Lini. I gotta look up how to say her name. I keep wanting to say Lenny. If you haven't seen this, okay, I know her heart, heart art looks really good. But yeah, Olivia has more defense, but effectively when attacks, she should have, you know, one point more defense. It's They're very comparable though, same res, um, six, uh, sorry, six less defense on uh, Lini. Lean? I don't know how to say her name, sorry guys. But either way, they're pretty comparable, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And as everyone knows, less clothing equals more defense. Yeah, the RPG logic really um, permeates in FEH. Anyways, my feelings on her is that she's good. Just build her with, like any other dancer, Fury, Wings of Mercy. You can use her B-Skill if you really want to, but Wings of Mercy adds a lot of flexibility to your dancers and your refreshers. Anyways, to Ishtar, and this is what I really wanted to talk about since the start of this, because Ishtar is the most broken hero of this group. I... I don't really know how to say this, but you guys know with her weapon and her C skill, right? Her weapon adds her weapon adds speed when attacking. Her A skill adds uh, is Swift Sparrow, and her C skill adds attack every odd turn. All right. So in conjunction with everything, she can have plus ten attack, plus ten speed when attacking. And her tome is what fourteen might, so she can get to like fifty eight attack, forty six speed without any buffs. It, like, it's just absurd how good Ishtar is in this game. Darting Blow 3, right? Yeah, okay. So in to totality, she has um, 6, six extra speed, plus 4 from the Swiss Barrel, so 10 extra speed. And she has 4 extra attack from Swiss Barrel, and 6 extra, six extra attack on odd turns from, you know, the odd wave ability thing on her C-scale slot. It's just absurd how good she is, guys. So yeah, 58 attack, 46 speed on neutral. Ishtar is one of the best heroes in the game, easily, and for a blue hero, for a blue mage, uh, that makes her better than Lin, makes her better than, you know, Delthea, makes her better than a lot of these 5-star locked mages. And the thing is, she, like, defensively she's not terrible, 26 speed. Now the biggest thing is, when she is attacked, she only have her base speed, right? Because of the double darting, essentially, darting blow and, you know, Swiss Barrel, she only had 36 speed. So it is possible for just to take her out, like, defensively, but when a player uses her, she's going to be a monster. So her, her weapon is 14 might, one cool, minus 1 cooldown, darting blow 3, Swiss Barrel, and it's plus 6 attack to herself and adjacent allies during odd turns. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean, she's so solid as a hero. Aries, destroy my enemies and my life is yours. Also Zeus, your son has returned, I bring upon the destruction of Olympus. Also, Ishtar is too. How Gal Kratos boy get me Ishtar boy? Did I say 26 speed? I meant 26 res. Um, it's easy to make a mistake when you're going over something so quickly. But you guys know I said 46 speed several times. But yeah, nice for nice of you guys to catch up on that. Catch me on that. This is also the thing when people are like, you know, people are like. You're, you can never be wrong with your opinion, you're ignorant to all this stuff. No, if I get something wrong, you guys jump on me immediately, so... I'm, I'm, t I'm perfectly fine with that, I actually prefer that. So thanks for catching it, guys. I don't want to say the wrong things. But just saying, like, when, whenever people get on me on these things, I'm like, oh, that's not true. Anyways, guys, to really clean up on what Ishtar is, she's a offensive powerhouse. She's the most offensive blue mage outside of Reinhardt and she's better off defensively. Her ability to buff her team and her base skill kit is just so good. Like for B, you just put Desperation on and you're done. Like, sh even at neutral stats, she's amazing. I would easily recommend to pull for her because, well, even I guess everyone has a blue mage, a strong blue mage, but to have Ishtar at no merges, she's already a monster. When attacking, like base, base speed when attacking is 46, base attack when attacking is like 58. Yeah, it's just craziness, right? So anybody can make use of her, and she doesn't take a lot of commitment to make good use of. So I easily suggest pulling her. She's the best hero of this banner, I would say. So yeah, Ishtar, the true monster of this game. I knew she was going to be broken whenever she when she was going to come into the game because of the fact, you know, of her role in um, Thracia. And she's Reinhardt serves her, and you guys know what she said and stuff like that. Yeah, so. Thunder Goddess. 
I would say Intelligent Systems did her right here. She's amazing. And I would, I'm would i fine with any broken hero as long as it's not a Reinhardt. This is what I'm saying too. Sorry, I'm biased, guys. Anyways, let's finally get to our last hero, Ares. 40 HP, 36 attack, 30 speed, 33 defense, 18 res. Now, you might look at 36 attack and think, like, that's not so good. But with, um, I believe it was Dark Missilin. Missilin. I keep saying that thing, saying that, that weapon is wrong. Uh, he should have 52 attack base. And then if you get plus attack, it's 55, right? So, the thing is, when he attacks, he can have instant Draconic Aura, basically. So, he, it's possible for him to one-shot a lot of green heroes. They didn't do anything different from her game. I mean, that's what I mean, like, they did her right. His And anyways, back to Ares, his sword is super powerful, you know. And you would probably want to keep Draconic Aura. If somehow you can get him to use the special immediately, or really early on, if you run Quick Impulse on him, right? So he has uh, Draconic Aura at one cooldown charge. Have him get attacked, right? He gets attacked. And then when he counterattacks, he when you get attacked, it's, you know, minus one on cooldown. So from that one cooldown, Draconic Aura goes to zero if you run Quick Impulse on him, right? He uses Draconic Aura. Hopefully you get that one-shot kill. And then right after that, you have your Draconic Aura back online in full again. And then you can just like one-shot another hero. It just, it's just absurd how strong he is. And of course, you run him in Horse Emblem, you add 6 attack, 6 speed. So good. But yeah, it's hard for me to say how to build him any differently. Honestly, like, you just go for the one-shot kills. As long as he just survives um, his first battle, he kills everything else. So I don't know how you would build this guy. You could probably use like... Death blow if you're really on top of like trying to get do that one shot kill. I would probably use Quick Impulse just to try and give him that instant Draconic Aura. Basically, his first Draconic Aura he has to get hit, but that's a defensive kill. And then, or you can run Fury like his dad, but I don't I don't really think he needs it. I mean, it adds defense, adds attack. You could add speed. You could also run. I don't know. Anything works out. He's just good defensively, offensively, good all around. But yeah, he just does insane damage. You're also right, you don't have to use Draconic Aura. You can also use Bonfire. But with all things considered, like if you run him in Horse Emblem and you get buffed up for attack and speed, uh, Draconic Aura is going to work out more better up mathematically. Now if you use like steady, steady stance on him, and you use like close defense on him, then yeah, Bonfire would be the way to go. You can also run QR. Either way, Ares is a great hero as well. I just don't like him being another red cav. We have so many of those in this game. Sigbert's really good, right? Sigbert's also another hero that can go for one-shot kills. Uh, yes, also, Elegant will for sure get his weapon as well. I guess this fits him better, so yeah. Elegant getting it would. Either way, between Elegant and Ares, they're so similar. <laughs> if you have Elegant, I don't think you really need Ares. Once the once the ability to come out, like you to learn his weapon, you really wouldn't pick one over other. They're so similar. We need more green units. And yeah, there's like Sword Reinhardt. There's Sigbert. You know, there's Xander. Well, Xander's not offensive, but uh, Brave Roy, Ellie Wood. You, got, you guys get the point. Like, there's just a lot of red sword heroes in the game. So I wouldn't say you need him. But it's nice to have him. So I would pull on this banner if I wasn't so conscious on what to pull next. Uh, what to pull next because there's the Groom banner or the Bride banner. And then there's a Legend of Heroes banner at the end of the month. So if you do decide to spend orbs here, it'll be a good choice. Just be aware of what you might be giving up. But I'm a fan of this banner. If you guys pull for this banner, if you guys pull for this banner, it's definitely go for blue and reds because that's the only two colors to get. So this banner is going to involve a lot of sniping. Just blues and reds, yeah. The problem is because of Ares and because of um, Lenny, uh, I can't say her name, Lean? I don't know. Either way, because of those two being both reds, if you have a lot of red sword calves, you might not want Ares. Likewise, if you have a lot of dancers or refreshers, you might not want um, Lenny. I'm just gonna call her Lenny, I'm sorry. Um, you might not want her. So, you might want to just go into this banner of sniping for blues, because Ishtar is the clearest best hero here. Clearly the best hero in this banner. And she has her own color as blue. So for this entire banner, you would only pull for reds or blues. But you might want to just go into this and just go try for Ishtar. If you have, you know, either a lot of dancers or singers, or you have a lot of red sword heroes. So that's my suggestion, guys. Um, but yeah, just be cognizant. At the end of the month, 
you have the Groom banner, Bride banner, or the Legendary Heroes banner. Is she gonna get demoted? She might get demoted. Um, Lenny might be get demoted, but we will see. Who the fuck is Lenny? I'm sorry, I can't say her name. Lean? Lynn? I don't know. I just call her Lenny, all right? Sorry. To conclude this, I just want to say Ishtar number one, then Ares, then Lynn, Lenny, whatever. I can't say her name. Uh, and Julius is okay, but Julius is basically a, a redone Arvis, another Arvis. Um, but Arvis has a clearer role in what he can do because of his uh, because of his B skill, healing him 10 HP each turn. Either way, it's a good crop of heroes, but the one I'm most excited for is Ishtar. Ishtar just really decimates the blue mage meta. Like, she, she's easily on top of that. 